First, I'm going to show you something stupid that you should not do. And then I'm going to show you something smart that you can do if you do something stupid and break your microwave. So these microwaves are notorious for uh, these door latches not working. If you look up the reviews online, everybody complains about these door latches not working. So I was having problems with my door latch, and so I figured I would take off some of the material on the latch to help it open a little better. So it used to look like that, be nice and tall, and I whittled it down, be a little shorter, maybe it would pop up a little easier. Well, when I did that, I didn't realize that it's supposed to be deep or tall like that so that it would push this button. It's a door switch. It's got three door switches in it. One, two, and three. Uh, so the one at the bottom reports to the computer to tell the computer that the door is shut and that it's safe to run the timer and trigger this relay. This relay breaks the neutral that goes to the transformer. So when this relay is engaged, the transformer gets power and uh, it makes enough voltage to run the uh, microwave emitter. The door latch on the top broke the hot, the 120 volt circuit coming off the other side of the coil for the transformer. It also broke the hot going to the motor that spins the food. And it was connected when the door was shut. And uh, this one is disconnected when the door is shut. So those two relays work in conjunction to do normally open, normally closed. So originally what I tried was I added this relay in place of this relay. And this relay is triggered when the timer triggers this relay. So I wired the signal into 120 hot, so it's always hot. And then I wired the neutral coming off of this relay, just like, uh, just like the transformer is. So whenever the transformer is uh, enabled, the relay is also enabled, and um, the food will then spin. The problem I ran into is that there's 50 volts on the circuit all the time. So the neutral has 50 volts on it, and it makes this relay flutter. So I thought, I'll add some resistance to the circuit. So on the neutral circuit, I put a potentiometer and I began to add resistance until the relay stopped fluttering. And that was 11,300 ohms. The problem was, when the relay stops fluttering, it also sometimes won't engage So when it's, when it's called. So the timer engages the relay to turn on the transformer and to turn on the relay, well, sometimes the relay will work and sometimes the relay won't. Um, so this relay is, it's not only controlling the motor that spins the food, but it's also controlling the hot of the coil of the transformer. So the food won't heat if this relay doesn't engage. Nothing happens if this relay doesn't engage. So all you get is a timer countdown and this relay clicks and then this relay doesn't click and nothing happens. The food won't, the food won't cook. So adding resistance to the circuit made the relay flutter much, much less. So 11,000 ohms made the relay flutter less. Um, 11,300 killed the relay altogether, but 11,000 makes it flutter less, and it will, still be, it will still engage reliably when called. It's just a little funny because when it flutters, although it flutters hardly at all, when it flutters, it makes the motor down below... Uh, sort of jump. It doesn't really spin anymore. It doesn't spin, but it kind of jumps. So it just, every time you open the door, the microwave makes a funny noise. So it works just fine, but uh, I what I did was I went ahead and got an ice cube relay off of Amazon because this is just a dumb coil. That's all it is. It's a 120 volt coil, and I'm hoping that because there's no extra electronics in it, you know, this relay is compatible with several different um, signal types. So it's got more electronics in it. It's got a little breadboard in it, and it does more stuff than I really need. So I got myself just a plain old 120-volt 
coil, ice cube relay. And I, I guess I'll try this with the same wiring setup and see if it works, just out of curiosity. But then I also, uh, now this is single pole double throw, and I bought a double pole double throw because I can use this one relay to mimic the function of all of the door switches, or at least two of them, two of the door switches. The, uh, this one here will stay in place. The one that uh, is currently reporting to the computer will be used to trigger the relay, and then the relay will mimic the function of both of these other relays. But first I'm going to see if my theory is correct that uh, the, the more rudimentary coil will not be affected by the 50 volts uh, that's always present. So I'll be able to remove these resistors, put this in, and we'll give it a test. So I put the ice cube relay in place of the rib relay. Let's see what happens when we plug this guy in. The relay flutters. Okay, so... See how it spins that motor? So with no resistance in the circuit at all, the relay flutters very quickly. Got it figured out now. So what I have now is you've got the, the bottom door switch. You've got 120 volts running into it, 120 constant, running into the bottom door switch. Coming out of the bottom door switch is the coil of the relay. So the door switch on the bottom energizes the relay. The door switch here still functions as it's supposed to. And so the relay is going to take place of the bottom door switch as far as the computer is concerned. So the computer is run through normally open contact of the relay. And then the top door switch, which was uh, closed when the door was closed, is run through this normally open contact of the relay. So it will be closed when the door switch is closed. So this relay takes place of the door the bottom door switch and the top door switch but the middle door switch stays as it was when the door shuts the relay lights let's see what happens if we push the button yeah it works and when you open the door everything dies so all of the safeties work off of that one door switch and trigger a relay to do the other door switches that's why it's nice to know how to use relays. Single pole, double throw, double pole, double throw. Tools at your disposal. Because, like for me, never working on a microwave before, and then doing a dumb thing, and uh, breaking it. Essentially just breaking my microwave. Then, if you know how to use a relay, just put one in and uh, fix your microwave.